Don't you think that pool glove makers treat their gloves like soap? Something to be used up and then you buy more? Look, I spend $20 a piece for chalk, but it's really good quality chalk and it lasts a long time. I can't say that about any pool glove. If you agree, you're going to want to watch this video. Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. I came back to pool in the fall of 2019 after a layoff and gloves were all the rage. And so I was like, hey man, I'm going to try out these gloves. And I wanted to get a good quality glove. So I researched them and I decided to buy a glove that was kind of at a higher price point. It was a Kamui glove. And it was, I think, about $35. And I thought, okay, good, I'm going to get some quality. Well, when that glove arrived, I really loved it. It was great. It felt, felt great. Um, I, love, I really love gloves and I love using them. They, they give you a consistent uh, feel and smoothness no matter how dirty your shaft might be or what the conditions in the room are. And you can make a firm grip and still have a, a smooth uh, cue action. So they're really great to use. I was really disappointed then after one week and that Kamui glove started to have a tear in it. And I was like, what the heck? Did I get a bad glove or something? I spent 35 bucks on this thing. And it wasn't more than two weeks after that that the glove got destroyed. The back of the glove literally came apart. And I thought, well, I must have either I got a bad one or Kamui isn't as good as I thought. So I'll, this time I researched gloves a little more. And I didn't just buy an expensive price point thinking that would do it. I researched uh, reviews on different gloves and I ended up buying a Molinari glove. And I had virtually the same experience. It lasted for a week or a little more before developing a tear in the palm. And then two or three weeks later, it was not usable anymore. It was just falling apart. I've got a number of gloves here. There's a Predator, a couple of off-brands, a three seconds glove. And if you look at these gloves, they all look fairly, these are all uh, well-used gloves. And if you look at the, them in the, here, they look pretty good. Take a look at the backside. In my experience, this is what happens to all pool gloves. And it doesn't matter how much money you spend on them. It doesn't matter what materials they claim that they're made out of. Let's take a look at what's wrong with pool gloves. Can we help pool glove manufacturers make a good glove? The only improvement I've seen is that some manufacturers are making a point of pointing out that their gloves are double stitched. And I know the Predator glove, for, for a fact, what originally was single stitched and you could turn the fingers inside out and you can see where the cloth is sewn on the inside and there's just single stitched along there and I think now they're double stitching that. The first couple of Predator gloves that I owned I learned really quick when I would get a brand new glove in the mail I would turn it inside out and sew up each side of the fingers because I knew they would come apart real quick if I didn't. So I think double stitching is a bare minimum of quality. A lot of the newer gloves, like Three Seconds and some other brands that I've seen, make a point of calling out double stitching. But that's not enough. The biggest issue with pool gloves is the bottom. And there's two issues here that, that work together, and that's these heel pads. They all have a, a, a different type of fabric, that is a square that's sewn on, and it just covers this part of the heel of your hand. Well, first of all, that's not enough. Most of the bottom of your hand, the heel of your hand, is in contact with the cloth when you're, whether you're making a closed bridge or an open bridge. And this heel pad isn't big enough. Second of all, this mesh fabric. Every manufacturer has this thin mesh fabric at the bottom and they talk about the breathability of the fabric. Um, you got to stop using the mesh, seriously. This mesh is the weakest link in the whole glove and it tears. So when you put this heel pad on the bottom, you're creating a joint between a very strong material and the weakest material, and that's where it tears every time. That's where the tears start. You can see on, on uh, some of these gloves, here on this Predator one, I tried to save it because it started developing a hole here. So I took a pad from a different glove that I've long since thrown away, cut it off the old glove and sewed it on here to try and extend the life of this glove. That's the lengths I've gone to to try and 
get a little more usability out of these gloves. Um, here I've used a piece of duct tape to try and save this glove. And another piece, another pad here. But once again, right where the pad uh, is sewn onto the mesh, that's where it tears. This doesn't work, guys. Forget about the mesh. You should probably use the same material that's on the back of the glove or the back of this, this finger or this material. Use that on the bottom. Breathability, at least for me, is not an issue. Pool halls are air conditioned. And even the top material is thin enough that breathability is not an issue. Seriously, stop with the mesh. That is the biggest contributor to the short life of these gloves. And then secondly, these pads, if you're going to add pad, you might not even need to add a pad if you use a better quality material on the bottom. But if you think a pad is necessary, this little piece uh, on the outside of the heel of your hand, that's not enough. It's got to cover most of the bottom of your hand. The next issue uh, that every single glove I own suffers from, and that's tears in the fingers. And you can see this glove here. Um, the end of the fabric of the finger, it, it's just been cut with the scissors, and that's it. So when it develops a tear, once that tear starts, it doesn't take long. Here's this one's torn also for that tear to work all the way down the glove. I don't know what the solution is to that. Do you fold it over and sew it? Do you singe it with a flame? Some type of glue? Uh, something has to be done to the fingertips to stop the tears from propagating down from the end of the fingertip. Another pet peeve I have is the, the fabrics. Every manufacturer will talk about the fabrics and how smooth and soft they are. I'm sorry, but telling me that a pool glove is going to be soft to the touch, that's like selling me a pair of pants and telling me that one of the features is it'll cover your legs. Well, that's what pants are. This is what pool gloves are. It's not a selling feature to tell me that it's soft. Now I realize you want to tell me about the fabric. That's fine. It might be lycra, it might be something else. You want to tell me about that. But describe how durable it is. Describe to me how long it's going to last, especially the fabric that you put on the bottom of the glove. That's what I care about. There's a feature that I really like uh, from the three seconds glove. This is probably one of the newest gloves to the market and they did something very different. Every other glove has a wrist and usually there's a Velcro closure that goes around the wrist. And the three seconds glove did away with the, the wrist. In other words, there's no fabric that covers your wrist here. And then rather than having Velcro that wraps around there, the Velcro comes from behind and goes across the back of your palm. And that works really well. I think it's clever and it looks cool. Um, that's a great design. So if you don't have a wrist on your glove, are you saving some fabric? Are you saving some costs there? That's something to look into. If you do have a wrist to the, to the glove, and I'll show you an example of one of these. This is a cheap uh, off-brand glove, these blue ones. But they have a wrist fabric, which is kind of stretchy. Well, and then they have a Velcro closure. Well, the Velcro is irrelevant if the wrist is stretchy. I don't ever use the Velcro, I just slide it on and that stretchiness is, is all that it takes. So having a Velcro closure here is a waste. It's a waste of money. It's uh, added cost to the manufacturer of the glove that you don't need. So decide whether you want a stretchy fabric around the wrist or do something like this where you get rid of the fabric and have, the, have a Velcro that comes around this way. The last issue is a little bit of a pet peeve with me. Here's an off-brand glove. And look at the graphic on it. It's got a little graphic of a pool player and it says the word roaming. What does roaming mean? Stop with the graphics. I think that's another added cost. I don't need your graphics on the back of the glove. And when, I, when I'm down on a shot, I don't need to be distracted by that graphic there. I realize that uh, brand names like Predator, Q-Tech, 3 Seconds, they're going to want and here's the Predator glove with the cat logo, but it's not stark white. It's, it's a little more muted. That's okay. I would prefer if you got a brand mark your glove, put it on the bottom, put it on the back of the wrist, somewhere like that. It doesn't have to be staring me in the face when I'm, when I'm doing a shot. Or just leave it off. It's, it's not needed. It's an extra expense. Perhaps you can save money that way and put some of that cost 
into the quality of the glove instead. The last issue I want to mention is glove sizes. Uh, some manufacturers just have one size glove and they say one size fits all. Most of them will offer small, medium, large, sometimes extra small, extra large 2XL. But take a look at this. This is the largest glove this manufacturer makes. It's a 2XL. And I'm six foot five and I have very large hands, but look at that. That's supposed to be an extra large glove. This is part of the reason why it tears, because it's got to stretch so much to fit on my hand. I have never bought any glove in the largest size available that fit my hand. And I've reviewed, uh, looked at the reviews on a lot of the websites for these gloves, and one of the most common complaints is, I bought the smallest glove and it doesn't fit my hand. It's too big. So this is a comment coming from someone who's probably a petite person, five foot four or five foot two, very small hands. You've got to get in touch with the sizes of gloves, of sizes of people's hands and what they need. The, uh, the, the minute variations between the sizes of what you call small, small, medium and large gloves, it's kind of insulting. You need to get in touch with your customers. You need, need to make a small size glove that's smaller than the smallest glove you have. You need to make a large size glove that's larger than any large glove that you make right now. I've owned more pool gloves than I can count in just the past two and a half years. Probably about every brand. I think my favorites are the Predator and the Three Seconds. The Predator, this is probably the fourth or fifth one that I've owned. And like I said, I was repairing them fresh out of the package to try and make them last longer. I, I would sew the fingers and add, add material to the heels and they still fall apart. So I gave up on them. Really like the three seconds glove. This is the only three seconds glove I've owned. This is the last glove that I bought, except for one that I just ordered. And guys, I, would, I was ready to buy another three seconds glove because this went probably about four weeks before it started developing a tear. But once it started developing that tear, it just got, all three fingers are ripped. It had more holes. I'm sorry, but I'm ready for another glove. And although I love this glove, I did not buy another three seconds glove. I bought, I ordered a Q-Tech glove and I've never had a Q-Tech glove. I think they're, it's a very new model for them. They talk about double stitching, but frankly, when I look at the pictures, it has a thin mesh on the heel. So I don't expect anything from the Q-Tech glove that above what I got from these gloves. The Q-Tech glove is the last glove that I'm going to buy. If it falls apart, I'm done. I'm going to go back to shooting pool without a glove. I shot pool without a glove and a maple shaft for 30 years, 25 years. And I'll go back to that. I'm not going to keep wasting money on this. I spend 40 to $60 per year on chalk. And I guarantee you I have spent over double that amount on pool gloves every year. And I'm done. I'm done with it. What you're doing isn't working. You, you have to do better. I am willing to spend 40 to 60 or even $80 a year on pool gloves. I'm, I want a glove that's going to last six months. And I don't mean six months to the end of its life. I want a pool glove that's going to last six months until, until it develops its first tear. So if I have to buy two pool gloves a year, I'll do that. And like these cheap gloves, these off-brand gloves are 10 bucks. You can get them for eight bucks. And they perform every bit as well as these gloves that cost 25 and $35 a piece. So I am willing to spend more, 30 or $40 on a pool glove if it's made with quality, quality design, features, and materials, so it doesn't fall apart in the first week or two. So I hope you pool glove manufacturers are hearing me. You're not doing a good enough job. I will not spend any more money on pool gloves until you fix these problems and make a quality glove. Let me know in the comments what you think. This is just my opinion. It's not a review of any specific brand of glove, although I've mentioned some of the brands that I've owned. And other pool players' experiences might be different. So let me know in the comments. Do you agree with me? Am I being overly critical? Am I being silly? Let me know. And hopefully some of the pool manufacturers, pool glove manufacturers, will 
Watch this video and read your comments, and maybe we'll see some changes. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.